Good day, all, and shalom. Welcome to another edition of the Daily Inspiration from the Scriptures, the Word of the Lord. What we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about judgment in the Lord. First scripture I'll read is Matthew 7, verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. So the reason I want to deal with this is because I want to deal with the understanding that we all have to develop on the judgment in the Lord and how it applies to us and what we have to understand about it. That scripture in Matthew 7 and 1 is quoted a lot in the world with a lack of understanding because it's usually the justification of someone doing something that is not right or is recognized as evil sinful in the eyes of the most high it's a defense a lot of times the way it's used that you can't say and you can't tell me anything right but that's not what that scripture is talking about so i'll continue on to bring out edification on what that's going into when you look at the scripture in matthew 7 it's talking about dealing with hypocritical judges or not and it's warning us not to be a hypocritical judge but I want to deal with what we have to understand about dealing with the judgment in the Lord and how it pertains to what we need to understand. When you look at 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verse 31 through 32, it reads, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. So now, that's another misnomer that a lot of people look at when you tell them something, thus saith the Lord, to either stop doing or something that they need to do. This. They'll say, you can't judge me. And then they'll look at that as you're condemning them. No, we condemn ourselves. And this is why we have to look at ourselves to see if we measure up to this word in our Messiah, the King, the one that came to show us through repentance how to recover ourselves from the snare of the devil so what we have to do is we have to use this word as a measuring stick so you have to judge yourself based on what the standard the word so when we are judged meaning we look at ourselves and when we see ourselves not doing things right or we're receiving chastening we're receiving it for a reason that we should not be hard pressed running into the way of the wide and broad that leadeth to destruction that's why the most high chastens us that we can be corrected so that we don't be condemned with the world that's what verse first corinthians 11 verse 32 is telling us so what is it that you have to do we have to use this word as a measuring stick but we have to be more specific let's read psalms 32 and 5 i acknowledge my sin unto thee and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and thou forgivest the iniquity of my sin. So now, what we have to do, like the psalmist here, is we have to look within ourselves, search our hearts, many minds, and find out what we do or how we live in this world and measure it up against what the scriptures say we should be in the eyes of the most high if we're going to be seen as righteous and pure when you find out you have sin a lot of times that's why you're being chastened you supposed to what confess and confess doesn't mean utterance with your lips it means a change in the mind attitude and actions that's what repentance is based on so when it says here the psalmist is writing acknowledging my sin unto thee and mine iniquity have i not hid i said i will confess my transgressions so he's going to confess his transgressions that means he's going to stop transgressing this is what we have to deal with when we dealing with judgment in the lord and then you notice at the latter part of verse 32, it says, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. So this is how we get forgiven. If we first judge ourselves 
measure ourselves up against the scripture and when we see that we're doing wrong we stop and we when we see that there's things that we need to do that we're not doing that we start doing them according to the word of the most high so now what is the measuring stick how do we laser focus measure ourselves because we have to acknowledge our sins well what is a sin First John 3 and 4, whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So the Bible is clearly defining the terms and is giving us a roadmap and the rules of engagement to fix ourselves. So we want to know what sins we need to confess and things we need to stop doing. Well, a good place is to refer to the law. And then the Most High is so merciful, he gave us a what? Understanding of how to be perfect in the law. Because he gave us Christ and the understanding that he came with. Not that the law is done away with, but the understanding has been perfected through our Lord and Savior Christ. That's why 1 John 3 and 4 says, when you want to know what a sin is that you're committing, you have to refer to what? what defines what a sin is it's the law whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law for sin is the transgression of the law so this worldly concept that there is not a standard has to disappear because there is a standard and all of us have to be what judged by it in the end that's what we have to understand only you are going to be judged for your actions and deeds no one else is going to be responsible for you and what you've done and how you lived, right? So now it's a standard and it's clearly spelled out on how we are to deal with the judgment in the Lord. This concept of you can't tell me nothing. That's why judge not that ye be not judged and you running with that statement is going to be your greatest failure in this walk if you don't get an understanding. So now what is the standard that we have to measure up to? I'm going to read it. First Peter 2, 21 through 22. For even hereunto ye were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin? Neither was God found in his mouth. So the ultimate goal for us in this walk is to be walking in the footsteps of our lord and savior christ the messiah the king lord of lords so we have to measure up and if you look at the understanding what judging yourself is all about is examining yourself and checking yourself concerning the iniquities that you commit that's why first corinthians 11 31 32 has told us that we have to judge ourselves and when we're being chastened we're being chastened for a reason that we not condemn and ultimately we have to measure up according to first peter 2 21 through 22 we have to measure up to the christ that's what a true christian is someone that is in lockstep following the understanding of the messiah and walking in it and if you notice, it says, 1 Peter 2, 21 to 22, for even hereunto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps who did no sin. So Christ did not violate, transgress, go against any of the laws of the most high God. Neither was guile found in his mouth. That guile it's talking about is talking about that deceit he wasn't deceptive in his understanding, neither should we. So we shouldn't take things and frame it and twist and contort things like Matthew 7 and 1, judge not that ye be not judged and then make it be our own escape or our refuge to commit sin. With that, my brothers and sisters, we hope all have a blessed rest of the day and we say shalom.